And um, it's time to call to order the Sustainability Committee on Thursday, May 18th, 2023. And um, before we have roll call, there were um, requests for excused absence, and that was from Karen Gallagher. So um, do we have a motion to excuse Karen Gallagher? I'll make a motion to excuse Karen. Second. 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 Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. And um, Jennifer Bracey has also asked for um, an exception for tonight. Do we have a motion to excuse I move her? to excuse Jennifer Bracey. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Boy, that was easy. Yeah. Could we have a roll call, please? <clears throat> yes. Uh, Chairperson Denise Manino. Here. Vice Chairperson Dory Lassam. Here. Member Carl Mickett. Present. Member Taylor Mandalu. Here. And alternate member Robin Singer. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> We're on a roll, as they say. So has everyone had the opportunity to read minutes from He's last number month? Two. Uh, approval of minutes. No, she's she's good. We, don't we need public comment? No. Oh, the minutes. Sorry. Um, has everybody had the opportunity to read the minutes? Yes. And um, any are there any changes or amendments that are suggested? So if can we get a motion? To I approve? move to approve the minutes from April twentieth, twenty twenty three. Second. Second. I was going to second Taylor. Sorry. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion approved. Minutes approved. <laughs> okay. So public comment. And so far, we haven't generated a lot of activity, but we're hoping. We're going to keep our sights on full chairs in the future. Right on? set our intention right? yes we're setting an intention tomorrow is a new moon so mm. it's a perfect time to yes, put that is. in your focus okay um, tonight we have the very exciting um, opportunity to review the second um, update of the sustainability plan and I'm excited to see it although I've gone through it already and thought it was beautiful has everybody had a chance to take a look Mm -hmm. So, um, Tommy or Alex, who's Thank you. okay. Right. Mm. Tommy Kiger, Assistant Director for Public Services. Um, what first, did you one, say your name was? Tommy. Did you say Tony Tiger? Tommy Kiger. Oh, I'm sorry. Sure. Tony Tiger. Been my name my whole life. Um, but, like uh, Frosted Flakes. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I just want to first all acknowledge, uh, you know, we're, we're filling in a little bit today. Uh, Robin uh, is unfortunately not available. She's uh, out with an illness, uh, but she'll be expected back for the next meeting. So uh, we're going to try our best to uh, give you all an update on the sustainability plan and uh, as well as some of the other items. And as we move through the agenda today, we might, uh, there's, there's a few that we might have to defer. Um, but that being said, uh, Alex has been heavily involved in the edits and revisions to the sustainability plan, working in close coordination with the rest of public services, other departments, and with Robin in particular. So we're going to let him uh, take a stab at providing some of the updates on the sustainability plan from our last meeting. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, I do. All right, you guys, so I know you are all familiar with the, our previous draft, so my main intention for this is just to highlight uh, the bigger changes that we made. I'll show you each, each and every change that we made, and if you have any questions, we'll do it like uh, section by section, like how we did last time. Okay. Okay. 
So to begin with, we had no initial changes up until the executive summary. So the first few pages remained virtually the same. We did have some changes to the table of contents due to our formatting changes later on. Okay. But I'll point those out as we, as we go through it. Yes. Um, on the Sustainability Citizen Advisory Committee, so um, Paul Robinson is listed, and is that because he was, I mean, he's not a member anymore. Um, but he was involved for a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that why he's in, I just want clarification. So from what I understand, uh, I don't know, Paul, but from what I understand, he did have some input in the beginning stages of this plan, and so that's why I would assume that he was added and here. I would suggest there that we list Denise and give her a title. Everyone else in the different categories have a title, so maybe she's the vice. chair and D Dory's the vice chair, and I would suggest that people get listed in alphabetical order. Um, or something. I mean, it stands out that all the other two have titles, and we should certainly at least list who our chair and vice chair are, I guess currently. And then, because um, Paul was vice chair when Dory was chair, um, maybe that's why it's listed with Paul second. But I think maybe and then maybe the rest of us just should be in alphabetical order okay noted uh i can point out that at least uh the lower section those are departments not actual okay. titles but um definitely take that into consideration mm -hmm. yeah, we can consider that when we update yeah okay. then everybody will know to when they want to say anything that they'll contact denise um. Should it be, uh, should it be, since we're going down that road, what would you call it, like initial chair, Dory Larson, initial vice chair, Dr. Paul Robinson? I don't know, I mean, it's like, it's confusing because mm -hmm. some of y'all are still on it, like current chair, Denise Menino, current, or vice, current right. vice chair, something like that, but then it gets kind of tricky. I think probably what we would do there was just put list past chair. Yeah, you know, past chair. And then when we have new, I mean, because we're going to have new members and people coming and going too, so we don't want to keep changing it and changing it, right? Mm -hmm. so maybe it's okay just like it is, just the, the list of the people. You maybe just put former or current. I, I'd like, I think it's important to know who the chair is and the vice chair. So do you think former chair, former vice chair, I mean, well, I would ask some opinions inside the city because I didn't. It didn't bother me at all that it was listed this way. I just know that we've all been involved with the process through the time that it's taken to write the plan. But taking um, Carol's feedback into account, maybe we need other opinions um, on what the protocol would be or maybe even look at other plans and just take a look. I think probably what we'll do is we'll, we'll take that into consideration compared to other published documents hmm. from the city and follow the convention that's been, been established. And if there's not a convention, we'll err on the side of uh, you know listing titles uh, per your feedback. We know that every committee has a chair. and a, I mean, it's part of the rules that we have to have that. Um, I mean, just looking at this, the assumption I would make was Dory's the chair and Paul's the vice chair, since they're listed first. But that's not accurate. No, but also if we change it to alphabetical order, that should mitigate mm -hmm. that issue as well. Yeah, I think alphabetical is a good choice. Mm -hmm. With title for them. Well, we also had a former member who, um, before Carol, joined us who sat with us for I don't remember how long maybe oh, yeah. was she here for a year right should we list her as well that's correct 
Yeah, well, if you're going to list mm -hmm. Paul, you probably should, right? I mean, I guess that's the question. Do you want to just list the current members or the people who've mm -hmm. all participated? Okay. Who was that I think that's fair to say. I, I drove her every to every meeting, so I should really remember her name. I can picture her. I can see her face, but I can't remember her name. I, <laughs> somewhere. I've It'll come to me on the them. drive home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think we should move. It's along. in the minutes. <laughs> Take these and in, in feedback into consideration, but keep the ball rolling here. Yep. Yep, Thank you. So with regards to the executive summary, we completely changed the formatting of it to break up the text so it's a lot less reader, uh, a lot more reader friendly, sorry. All the information on the reading is the exact same, it's just been broken apart for better reading right now. Mm -hmm. So much better. It is. It's vi everything visually was Thank really you. Appreciate clear that. and beautiful. Yeah. Yep. Much better. No changes to the introduction, no changes to the strategic plan. Although you might note as we go down the sections that each title has now been uniformed so that, you know, for consistency's sake. Mm -hmm. We move the list of abbreviations up here so that, you know, we heard you guys' comments about abbreviations not being known, so this is to introduce every abbreviation before we actually get into the document. Great. And there were no real changes to the guide as well. Okay, can I see that one? Just one more down. Thank you. Okay. And so as we move into this uh, progress to date section, our first change was in the Duke section. We, yes. Just um, in 1.2 description of action categories. Okay, up until this point, it's really easy to read because the, the type is dark. And then when I get to this section, which also has colors, which make it, it be, the type's really light. And I, it's harder, way harder to read. Like, I don't want to read it. Okay. And so if you can, and it's a thinner type. It, it may be Helvetica or something. It's like very thin. So I think readability, noticing that, as soon as I got to this page, I went. So okay. I Understood. think it's Would because you, they bold, emboldened yeah. um, a lot of the terms that are going to be live links and mm -hmm. online, right? Correct. Um, uh, well, the, the bold terms are just uh, for the glossary at the end. Okay, just, just, just one note on former member. Um, Dory found her name. It was Judy Nelson. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. So if we could just think about that text, that would be helpful. Okay, noted. Um, but yes, like I was saying, uh, we changed the first point in the Duke to be more personalized to Tappan Springs before it was uh, general statistics about Florida. Now we made it specific to Tappan Springs, so that's good. Mm -hmm. And in the water section, oh, could you just go up one more, sorry. So we did add a point here, yeah. the second point about floodplain management. Um, so that's just for you guys to note. And down here, we changed the title of the Spring Bayou to now say Spring Bayou Water Quality Monitoring. The information in the text is the same, just the title change. And then on this page, just a, a small change was the, uh, we changed the icon at the <coughs> bottom, not a big deal. There was a little typo um, on, I don't know whether we've gotten to that part yet. It's watershed management plan, where it says Klosterman um, focuses. I don't know whether you see it. It's it has too many. Here it S's. is. Yes. Okay. It's under spotlight. Yeah. 
thank the you, one ben. with this icon on the bottom. Page 17. <laughs> the water. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And one of our biggest changes for this entire document, we completely revamped the community engagement section, so it's way more visual, a lot less ready. The section itself is a lot less pages, and so we included this timeline here. Uh, this timeline mainly focuses on the surveys and the workshops that we conducted when they took place, and just uh, quick bullet points to say what was the main point about each um, session. And then at the side, you'll see we have pictures highlighted of the uh, workshops that we conducted. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yes, and going along with the visual friendly interface. Um, could, yeah. So we just have this quick summary um, regarding the workshop, regarding how we went about it, you know, how we base it off of the staff framework. Just a quick summary. And uh, we also talk about the main subsections of the survey being demographics, climate, and community, and personal actions and experiences. And then at the bottom there, we have that uh, green emblem mm -hmm. that will link you to the appendix where we have more supplemental materials uh, about the public sh workshops and surveys. Push it and it'll take you there? Correct. That's nice. Will it do it now? It just did it. Yeah, fancy. How do I get back? Oh, unfortunately, you have to scroll. <laughs> Oh, they can't have a button to return? Uh, we could. It, it just might get really uh, okay. really odd at that point. And now we have this uh, survey section. So in this section, we really... And where was I? I have to get back. What page are you on? Page 24. 23, 24. What? 23, 24. 24. I have to scroll all the way back. On the bottom of the page, just do the number. Where? There's page numbers on each of them. I see that. I'm scrolling up. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. So in the survey section here, we really wanted to uh, show the community that we heard their responses in the, uh, in the survey that we provided. And so that's what this entire page is about. So the, qu the main question uh, that this page is based off of is what would community members like to see in the plan? And the top four answers are up there in bold. And we also have the word cloud to present all the other answers. And of course, with the word cloud, the bigger the answer is, the more uh, votes and responses that it receives. So mm -hmm. this section is basically to let the public know that you know, we heard you and we're, we're doing something about it. Mm -hmm. All right, now moving on to the action section, uh, you might notice that we have changed a few of the, the photos going through these sections. I know you guys had some uh, SpongeDoc ideas before, so we changed a few of the photos. And, and you'll notice that trend going through the document. We, have, we changed a, a lot of the background photos. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the background I'm photo on all of this are the same. No. Well, yeah, because Wilson's boat's there on the first Right, but as you go down, you'll notice we there are a few four, repeated photos, same. but as you go down, you'll notice that we change some photos like this one, and as you go down, you'll see some more. They're all the same. Yeah. Who's this Wilson guy? I don't know. <laughs> it's featured. Okay, now going through with the actions. Um, a lot of the wording was changed on a lot of the actions. Um, some slight changes, some more significant changes. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna point out each one that did have wording changes, and I'm also gonna make a note of which ones had more significant changes to their wording. A lot of the wording has just been condensed, so the ideas are the same, but I'll point out the ones that are more significant. So the first one that's changed is action number four. This one was just condensed. Um, we took out a little bit of the words, but the idea is the same. On number five and six, those are more significant changes. Um, we completely changed the how the wording is, and so it's just a, a different idea, but this the same action is presented, essentially. Mm -hmm. The next change would be number 10. That one is just a slight change, just omission of, of uh, unnecessary details. Number 11, the same thing. The next big change is action number 14. So the seawall ordinance, we, we changed a lot in, that, uh, in the wording of this action. And action number 16, we didn't change. In 14, 
on the second to last line, it says evaluate potential use, and then there's like a big space. Is that? Yeah, I'm not sure what that's about. Looks like. Just but we'll, we'll definitely fix that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I was wondering about that as well. It looked like it wrapped mm -hmm. or was somebody hit <laughs> return. Yeah. It needed to be backed up. Thank you for that. And uh, like I said, action 16 was just a, a slight wording change. Nothing significant there. Next change was action number 24. Also, it is a very slight change. And on 16 as well, it might be good to drop the word create to the next line down, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't know for sure how it will fit, but it's kind of off at the edge. Where right, I see, I see what you're saying, yep. Oh, yeah. And action 24 was also just a very minor change to the wording, nothing notable. Next change was 25 and 26, so these were both big changes. Instead of bicycle and pedestrian, we change it to multimodal master plan now. Um, and then action 26, instead of considering green stormwater infrastructure, we're gonna make green stormwater infrastructure a core goal of the city's master plan. Next change was number 28. And, you know, building off of that same idea, making green uh, infrastructure a core goal, so we, we changed this whole action word into to reflect that. Robin. Yes, thank you. Thank you. On uh, action number 30, I would uh, like to see adding, it says, seek funding sources to help reduce costs for residents and business owners to implement green building practices, such as installing solar panels, I would like to see another ex example of that there, like um, water conservation, et cetera, or something, so people will know that it's not just solar panels. It could be, you know, other possibilities as well. Right, that makes sense, definitely. And with that being said, Thursday was also one we made uh, significant changes to, so some more changes to be made. Uh, and action 31, just a very slight change there. Action 37, another slight change. And 38 and 39 were more significant changes that we made. Um, if you guys want me to actually point out the specific written changes, I can do that as well. But um, as you can see in 39, we did not have the uh, Cops and Kids building idea in there before, now we have it, so. And then action 41 was also a significant change. Could you, would you mind going through the yes, differences? Yes, definitely. So, with action 39, was it? You yes. said 37 too. Oh. 37 as well, sure. So at 37, before we had partner with community organizations to maintain an inventory of civic organizations, neighborhood associations, and local service providers organized by geography or neighborhood, which can be used to address neighborhood specific needs. So you can see with that one, we just deleted uh, organized by, no, not a big deal. Yeah. And then with number 39, previously we had provide young people with opportunities to participate in civic activities. Now we have utilized the creation of the Cops and Kids building to create the new programs to provide the young people with the opportunities. So just a quick pretext to the initial idea is what we added on. Yes. I, uh, related to that, one kind of key theme through any of these items is we did try and make an effort to tie this back from like more general items uh, to if there's a specific city initiative that's already ongoing that addresses that sort of item, we wanted to tie it back to existing city programs so it makes more sense like where this goes within you know, the city organization, the city's existing programming. Thank you. So I have a question about that then if you don't mind. <clears throat> so like cops and kids building, but is it is it a program? Like it's weird that it's yeah. like the building is what's you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, like, it's not the building that's going to help the program. It's what's happening inside the building. Sure. Uh, that, that's a new program that's, or, well, this Cops and Kids has been going on for quite a while. It's right. a, a partnership with, you know, youth and the, and the police department. 
And uh, they are creating a new Cops and Kids Center, so it'll be like kind of, it's a small facility right now. They'll have more opportunities for uh, new types of programming to be developed in that pro uh, within Cops and Kids. So um, I think we can word that to capture that's gonna be a broader center and an expansion right. of the program. Exactly. So Carol? So when I read this, it makes it seem, one, we've got to wait for this building to be built before this happens, and it seems like that's the only place it happens. Seems to me, if we're going to help young people, young people not being children, but like 20-year-olds or something, to develop them into leaders so that they can sit on committees that I think putting them in the cops and kids building seems strange. I would think you'd want to hold the classes like here so that they can be in the building where leadership takes place and not in some off, off building um, where it's not about leadership. We're, we're trying to create leaders and it seems to me they should be in a place where leaders are in the center of town. Um, so that's my comment. Just Do, to doesn't, count, sorry, yeah, doesn't the Cops and Kids building already exist? So it might be syntax here that needs to be worked out. It says out. create. Uh, Robin, you have a yes, comment? Yes, the, the Cops and Kids is a new building that was, I think, ARPA funded. And our police chief, Jeff Young, was one of the, <clears throat> pardon me, one of the drivers of that. So, but it's more than just a cops and kids building. It's going to be a community center. Yes. And so cops and kids is a component of it. But the, the vision that I heard of it is will be so nonprofits will have a place to go and meet and gather and collaborate. So it's much broader than just cops and kids. Um, I don't know if that's the official name of the building or not, but it's the new community center. I, I don't know how you'd word that, but. Yeah, that's, I would agree with that. It's, it's viewed as more of like a community hub for, you know, youth engagement. Um, obviously, there's always, you know, what happens with the young adults and things like that. Uh, youth programs do tend to be targeted to, you know, school age folks and high school kids and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that but, what we're, I'm looking for is people who are like in their 20s or 30s who need to become leaders and a place to train them. But it also makes it sound like, one, the building hasn't been created and two, that that's the only place that this is going to take place. I think we can take that into consideration and, and do a revision to, you know, broaden it a little bit for youth programs and uh, leadership and development. Your wording of community hub, that might broaden that language, the cops and kids new community hub or something like that. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I just, to, I, I think that it is wise, though, to have programming, like, closer to the community because it may be, Kind of difficult for some people to get to city hall you know what i mean so i think the intent too is to like have what do you mean by the community it's in the middle of a, a community area and it's already being utilized as a community center rather than having them come to this building which would be a more formal environment you know now, if who you, that's are what they? you're thinking who are you talking about i mean tarpon's a big place where, this, where the safety building is and the rec center and the cops and kids, it's, at, it's where a lot of the city buildings are already. Okay. But people have to drive there. I mean, lots of people don't live around there. I think they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a pretty neighborhood. walkable part of town. Have, have you been there before? Yeah. I mean, um, well, there's people that live around there, but there's people, other people... I mean, I don't live close to there. Is there property available on Chesapeake for this? <laughs> you can come to my house. <laughs> I think it's, you know, this is where the, the city had the property to, to create this thing. So they're looking to have a broad community hub for the social service places. People can have a uniform place to go for social service agencies and providers and residents and community members. I don't think that's been fully fleshed out exactly how it's going to be formed, but that's the intent of it. Mm -hmm. now, now, okay, I'm confused. So, so when you say the neighborhoods there, the community, are you seeing this program as focusing on the community, the African-American community? Is that the focus of this? 
which is certainly something that is important. I mean, I don't know if you're talking code to me or something when you say the community and the neighborhood. No code. No code. It's just that there's limited amounts of area that the city has built different facilities. Mm -hmm. But that's very central. You know, to, maybe not central to people that live on the other side of US 19, but it's pretty central. Bicycle, it's, it's easy, mm -hmm. easy to bicycle to. Mm -hmm. You know, so off the I, I will say I think you know part of following up on that action item is you know to increase engagement upon, among low income or minority neighborhoods, and mm -hmm. that's in the Union Academy neighborhood. So that would be specifically targeting uh, the demographic that we're hoping to reach with youth engagement and leadership development. Uh, and we're you know, the city's envisioning building that facility there. And so we just wanted to you know acknowledge that the city is making strides towards uh, improving youth engagement and leadership development, and it would make sense to use that existing effort as a springboard for other uh, youth leadership programs. I okay. did want to echo your comment about it kind of sounds like it's only going to happen in the Cops and Kids Center. Maybe just say like, and other avenues to create new programs. Certainly. Yeah, we, can, like we can incorporate that change. And Robin, uh, excuse me, what did you call it? You said the utilize the cops and kids community hub or or the but the thomas's words that, that yeah. sounds really it sounded I, I will say that's that's another department so i can't pick the branding necessarily on that whatever they choose to call their programs that's funded through the police department they, they will call just, it, but I mean, it but that's what that we're would give the feeling of a community hub of, of you know that's the overall feel that they're trying to achieve only your words that's it yeah and my only my only um issue at all is just that it it the wording isn't quite clear enough you know create utilize the creation it mm -hmm. seems a little a little awkward so it could be improved we, we can revise the wording on that one to make it more clear all right let's... i have one more thing to add. okay so the reason i'm bringing up different locations is for example, when I did the Citizens Academy, mm -hmm. you know, every week you went to a different place to, throughout the city and you met at a different place. And it gave you a sense of, one, learning about the city and that we belong there. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, that that's really important, that if you're going to develop leadership with the, with the youth, who maybe haven't been felt welcome in the rest of the city, that you, you expose it, you bring them to these places and, and give them a sense of ownership, that you own this city, just like everyone else who's in leadership. And that's, why, that's what's sort of getting me here. Mm -hmm. And I understand that this is, you know, being built to be a community center, but when you're developing a leader, you want them in the community. There's the Heritage Center. There's the, the new thing. There's the City Hall. There's all types of places around. Uh, again, I, I don't think. Excuse your smart remark. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't think we were envisioning this to be limiting, that we would only ever do, you know, community, like, engagement or leadership development out of the future Cops and Kids facility. Right. I think we just want to recognize that this is an existing, ongoing effort to focus on that, that the city is dedicated funding to, and that we would use that as a springboard for a larger set of youth so leadership maybe development the initiatives. needs to be I think we can make some revisions to that to make Thank it more clear. You. All right, uh, next change is number 41. Whenever you get a chance, scroll down. So previously, uh, it was a little bit long. We had, this is the previous statement, we had adopt an environmental justice or social equity plan that includes strategies to reduce negative impacts and increase access and proximity to community facilities and services among low-income populations and racial and ethnic minorities. Adopt an equity or social justice policy that establishes a co commitment to equity and local government decision-making activities and investments. 
So, yeah, pretty long before. Um, so I didn't make the word and change personally, but I would assume that, you know, condense, con condensation of words is, was a big factor here. Mm -hmm. And then last few changes, uh, number 47 and 48. So as you can see, these got way uh, shorter. Previously, well, not way shorter, but previously we had adopt a health and all policy statement, which can be considered in local decision making. This time we just changed the word into resolution to guide local decision making. Same thing with the climate and all policies uh, statement. Resolution to guide local decision making is a word and we chose to go for here. And then final change was number 50. Um, instead, previously we had amend the land development code to allow farmers markets. Now we just have evaluate. And that's you know the, the main change that I would say is that we made there. Nothing major, but yep. And I don't know if you guys might have noticed, but we chose to continue with the color consistency of the titles throughout this entire section. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, <coughs> so I have a question. Go ahead. Never mind. I'm not going to ask it. Okay. Um, so. The next, this was a somewhat major revision. Uh, we are trying to keep an eye on brevity and uh, you know readability for the overall document. Uh, and we kind of looked at uh, the three last sections of the previous draft, and we realized that we sort of had three lists that had different pieces of information in them. And it, we kind of realized like this would probably be consolidated. So um, what we did here was we uh, consolidated some of the wording on the original action items as we've previously discussed and moving forward the implementation schedule. There used to be a sort of detail about a detail table regarding price and cost and then there was a subsequent table about phasing. So we've consolidated those two because they largely contain the same information. And uh, we also focused, instead of having things in list as year one, year two, it's always easy to lose track of things like that. Uh, we made an effort to put things in actual fiscal years so that it, just to help with like tracking and budgetary purposes mm -hmm. and things like that and make it a little bit simpler to read. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, also we moved the key to the front to make it a little bit easier to read. Mm -hmm. And then we put the implementation schedule, again, consolidating all the details about the specific action items. Uh, we kept the action items number, but also to make it a little bit less wordy, we had sort of shortened action item titles um, to put more information in a simpler format. Um, yes? So in this, um, the text part, mm -hmm. that font is different than the one you use up in all of the other narratives. It's, it's, again, a thinner, it's not as bold. It almost looks blue, but I think that's because of the, the blue and the other thing. But it's a different font. Noted. We can take a look at that. For which section? I'm sorry. The narrative on page 46. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is blue. The other ones are bold, but it's sort of a black, bigger text. Did you intend for them to be a different color in this section or the, f the font? I cannot speak to the intent with a specific color I noting. Uh, that was not my decision. We'd have to discuss that with Robin, but um, if uh, but we can definitely look at consistency with fonts and, and typefaces and colors. Yeah, list of definitions is that same skinny font. I mean, maybe a choice. Yes, thanks, Sorry. Denise. I, I don't know where this would go, but something occurred to me when I was looking at these funding sources of grant of capital capital improvement and grants and so forth, mm -hmm. and that is we have a state appropriations avenue as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I I looked at the state appropriations for fiscal year 23-24, and I noticed that the two that Tarpon uh, w received one was for the library. Uh, remodeling $500,000 and another one was for uh, cultural services $31,000 but when I looked at the other list of what other communities uh, applied for and are receiving um, Dunedin 
wastewater treatment plant, $400,000. Gulfport sanitary sewer repair, $1 million. And I was thinking that this is an avenue that I don't know has had an eye towards it from sustainability point of view before. So it occurred to me that to have that if we were able to get a state allocation for something that we know we're going to have to do, then that money could be spent, obviously, elsewhere in the city for different purposes. But to maybe have, um, like, knowing what's coming down, like like, a, like rem removing septic tanks or something like that, mm -hmm. have a specific wish list, I want to call it a wish list, a specific eye towards what kinds of like infrastructural improvements that would be for our, you know, needs and wants and desires and all that. But I don't, I didn't see that Tarpon Springs was taking advantage of that yet. Dunedin, Gulfport, you know, I mean, on and on and on. And and they, they're they allocated to the county and then they go to the cities. But it went, you can go and look and it, it has like all Pinellas County allocations. Hmm. And it's interesting to read what different cities applied for and received. Hmm. What is that funding? It's a state allocation. It's a state appropriations. State appropriations. So if you look at the, the um, just go state of Florida appropriations 2023-2024, and you can see what all got asked for and what applied, but a lot of them dealt with more than just cultural things or, I mean, museums and creative Pinellas and, you know, the Dunedin Fine Arts Center. I mean, a lot of those types of things are funded, but there's also significant dollars going towards more infrastructure, things that we could really put, put money towards in the city. That's a good idea. Yes. Yeah, that, that's certainly a viable funding source, and um, I, I think we could probably put something in here to acknowledge that for sure, uh, certainly. Just to keep an eye towards it each year, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. And when the deadline is to apply. <laughs> okay, so um, as you can see here, this table has been revised. It is listed uh, in not in order of action items, but in order of implementation year. Um, one thing that we did a lot of work with other staff uh, from other departments was trying to align our goals with existing initiatives uh, to make sure that we're capturing, um, you know, existing initiatives that are ongoing within, uh, you know, the action items. So, for example, uh, any of the action items that were related to land development regulations or the municipal code, the building code, um, knowing that we're the the Planning and Zoning Department is in the process of updating the comp plan, which will uh, create uh, updates to the municipal code. We decided to consolidate all of those action items that related to the code into uh, 2024 for within, you know, within reason. Um, that way, once you have the code open, it's easier to do a whole suite of changes than to keep coming mm -hmm. back like every two years with additional code revisions and things like that. that uh, so that's one example of how we used existing city plans and initiatives to uh, inform the, the schedule for implementation. Uh, another example would be the, um, I believe fairly early on in year one or year two, uh, we had some of our... Um, items that related to the existing tree survey. So we included that. That's ongoing right now with the city arborist. So we tied those together. Um, the other kind of guiding principle that we looked at was um, implementability. So any items that were sort of develop a plan to be additionally implemented over a number of years, we tried to put those towards the front knowing that it might take time to fully implement those plans. We didn't want to have a 10-year plan and create a new action item plan in, in year nine. There would be no opportunity to implement it. So um, the uh, one good example of that would be the climate action plan. So we know that that's going to be a long-running program for the city. So we put in year one because uh, we know that it'll take a number of years to implement. Yes. So I'm going to echo what I said last time, that action number 32, sustain existing and attract new cultural and artistic creatives, which you have in 2032. Now that's a long going, ongoing plan. Mm -hmm. 
that you don't want to leave to the end. It should be in the beginning because you want to attract these sort of creative thinkers who bring um, good things to the community, innovative ideas, participation, um, creative thinking, innovators. It's the sort of citizen you want and you don't want to wait. You want to have that right away. And we have an art committee that can help do that. Um, we have a sustainability. That's how you help to sustain, for example, the things you remember of, about Rome and ancient Greek is the art. You don't remember, except for Rome, you do remember the sewers. But, um, you know, the things you remember in history are the grand cultural innovations. So you want these people. And it's not just about making art. It's about a whole way of being. So I'd really suggest, once again, that 32 should be up near the very top of the list and implemented in 2024. Thank you. We, we knew that, um, obviously, we can't put everything in the first five years. So we no. knew that whatever we put towards the end, we were likely to get comments on on it as being, you know, certain committee member priority. So we'll take that into consideration when we're doing our next round of revisions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any, any additional comments on the implementation schedule? I don't see any of them being as as soon as next year. Were there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, They're all 2024. Oh, I see. Oh, I do see that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, tw 2024 starts on October 1 for the city. Yeah. So that, right. those Lots are things, things that we would that, yeah. be planning to start in fiscal year 2024. Okay. It starts October 1st of 24? I'm sorry, of 2023. I misspoke. Uh, so yeah, our, our fiscal year runs... That's when 24 starts? Yeah, the fiscal year runs October 1 to the following September 30th. Okay. So uh, when we when we generally use <clears throat> fiscal years... For you know budgetary purposes, for example, the uh, we'll get to this a little bit later in the today's agenda. But the climate action plan is uh, currently a budgeted item that we've requested uh, for fiscal year 2024. So that that aligns with the schedule for implementation. Okay. Next, we have the list of definitions. And uh, I think we'll let Alex go ahead and round out the appendices. All right, and so first thing about the appendices, we added a new appendix just for the table of figures since we our only figures technically that we are calling out in this document are in the appendix. So we designated appendix one. Could you just go down a little bit? We designated Appendix 1 just for the list of figures. And then in Appendix, yes. It's a sort of strange title, list of figures. Um, they're figures of what? People who, numbers of participants? Is that what? No, so the, the figures are what you'll see later on in the, I believe it's Appendix 3, with the uh, surveys. We have charts and tables, and that's what these are referring to. Okay. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll see it as we scroll down, but uh, yeah, there's, there's just a couple charts and one table that this is referring to. Okay. In Appendix 2, we made... List of figures mean list of charts or list of images or something like that? No, well, not, they wouldn't, they wouldn't relate to, to photos, but they would relate to um, charts that we created, essentially, and tables that we created and, and added in. OK. So when I hear list of figures, I think numbers. I'm going to get numbers, like figures. Or I thought maybe it was shapes, or I didn't know. But a list of charts or tables. That would tell me something. OK. Yeah. Um, I will just mention that list of figures is, I mean, it's a fairly uh, common title for this type of stuff in technical reports and stuff. OK. But you're, you know, the idea is people like me 
want to understand it okay. as well. Understood. In Appendix 2, we didn't make any changes besides color coordinating each section to match. Nice. Appendix 3 changed a lot. Um, a little bit more down. We, uh, for the public workshop section, I don't know if you guys might recall, but in this section after each, um, you know, separate subsection here, we had different bar charts and, and so forth. We decided to omit all of that and just keep it short and simple for this particular section about the workshops. And we included a separate work cloud down here, um, also pertaining to the workshops. Mm -hmm. And we also, you know, condensed the survey section as well. We took a couple of the survey pages that used to be in the main document, brought it down here. So we have this word cloud uh, considering the question that we had asked before. And then we have the summary of survey results that you guys are familiar with, highlighting each subsection and what they, what they mean and how they responded. And then, you know, we have the entire survey down here. Nothing changed here. Mm -hmm. And these are the figures that I refer to. So this, this type of chart and, and so forth would be considered like a figure. Figure. But then how about the table? That's not listed in the list of figures? It is. But it's, it's called a table, not a figure. Yes. Okay. And then this one's called figure eighteen. So yes, this was our final figure right here. We just just the three figures to call out. Mm -hmm. And then we didn't change this page any. This page remained virtually the same. And the only other change that we made here is in the reverse osmosis facility section. We added a bullet point about the DEP environmental stewardship award that we recently received. Mm -hmm. And if you'll note in the second paragraph, we added a couple sentences just to expand on that idea a little bit. And that is more or less it for the changes. Besides the one uh, text box uh, change in the greenhouse gas summary report that you guys pointed out last time, we amended that. Now, uh, okay, let me look at the figures. Figures. Overall, I was really excited that the plan looks so much better. Thank you. So I thought much so as well. more cohesive and clearer clearer to read and to absorb um, the organization of all of the sections and the interfacing to the um, strategic plan. Everything, everything seemed so much more refined. Mm -hmm. So you've done a lot of work in the last month, and I really commend you for all of the changes that you've made. They've been um, made it a lot, enhanced it a lot more. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate but you guys' comments as well, because that's what you know obviously drove us to make these changes. There's a um, figure or a table on page 82 that's not in your list of figures. Uh, the greenhouse gas summary. What? Yes, uh, no, that, that makes sense. Um, initially, we just had, you know, essentially transferred the actual summary greenhouse gas summary report straight into this document without making any changes. But that's a good point, and we'll take that into consideration for sure, because these are also counted as figures. But yeah, thank you, everybody. But it thank you. really is, as Denise said, I mean, the presentation, it makes <coughs> such a difference. I thought so as well. Yeah. OK. So now that we've gone through the sustainability plan update and um, made comments, we're going to look at the June newsletter publication. Really sorry Robin couldn't be here for this, but Tommy is going to do an awesome job. 
And this is one item, you know, knowing that Robin's been heavily working on this, if the uh, committee elected, we could uh, defer this to the to a future meeting um, and uh, publish the, the newsletter in July. Robin and I briefly were able to discuss that this afternoon. Uh, or if you the committee would prefer, uh, you're very welcome to review what Robin's provided in the backup. And uh, I'd be happy to take any comments and forward those to Robin uh, for consideration. Uh, one important thing to note is uh, schedule-wise, we do, if uh, unless the board elects to, or the committee elects to defer, um, we will probably, this will be the last time you'll be seeing uh, this item before it becomes published. So we want to hear what y'all would like, to, what the committee would like to put in the newsletter or any comments on the materials that Robin's proposing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she's going to take that and develop it and go ahead and go straight to publication uh, as the current schedule for implementation. So what are your thoughts? Do we, should we look at this tonight? And yeah, I think I we know. should look at it yes. tonight for sure. Oh, yeah, I think we look at it and if we want to push, then maybe we can. Yeah. So can we please go through the items that she is looking at pr producing with a newsletter? Certainly. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> first and foremost, the goal, the probably the primary goal of this newsletter will be to introduce what, what the newsletter is. This is the first one. So uh, there'll be probably a healthy amount of introductory uh, material, sort of like your first issue of any new magazine. Mm -hmm. You know, welcome to X Magazine, and this is what it's about. Um, same thing for the newsletter. Uh, also introduce the purpose of the Sustainability Committee and how to engage, hopefully drive a little bit more public engagement, maybe get a few more folks showing up to the meetings. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be a recap of the recent events such as Earth Date, Knowledge, Knowledge Nibbles, let people know what sort of programming the Sustainability Program is putting on for the public. And uh, also some other important updates on the Vulnerability Action Plan uh, and the uh, Sustainability Plan. Uh, letting folks know that there'll be workshops coming up uh, in June and also about future programming for EcoFest in September. And um, there'll be some sort of sustainability fact or, you know, factoid related to Tarpon Springs and our environment. Uh, we heard you loud and clear last week, uh, last month when we were talking about that. You know, tell us, help educate folks about, you know, the environment and sustainability in a uniquely Tarpon way. Mm -hmm. And um, also contact information. So, uh, I think Robin's goal is to have this be concise, informative, engaging the public, and um, you know, focus on driving folks to our future programming um, and getting folks engaged with sustainability. Mm -hmm. I think the time is now. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's my vote. I, you know, that I think that we we're talking about things that we just done you know we celebrated Earth Day it was a lot a lot more substantive than it had been before mm -hmm. and had the opportunity to do knowledge and nibbles those are have just happened so in order to be on top of it and be timely it seems like it would make no sense to delay it till July so that's my thought but what does everybody else think yeah, I had that same thought, mm, Robin. Yes, I I th think that the sooner the better. I had some some thoughts about the newsletter that I'd like to share, and okay. and that is the idea of bringing the community into the process, to drawing people into it. Right. So I thought the invitation to serve on this committee should be there. Let people know that there's a, a way to do that, and and maybe a link to the where they can look online to sign up for that. But also a spotlight on businesses or even individuals, residents who have done anything. If a restaurant switched from styrofoam to compostable, that's a big deal. So that they can have a spotlight on them and encourage others to do the same. Mm -hmm. Or if a neighborhood does a neighborhood cleanup or something like that. So to, to take it from this big down to the community level and so that people will be like, I want, I'd like to see my thing in there too, you know, I, I, whatever it happens to be. But, um, or bus yeah, businesses, residents, whatever. Um, those are my thoughts. I really like those. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to motivate businesses and residents. Yeah, to sh give, give a little example. So, yes. you know, here's an example. It doesn't have to be really, for example, well, here's an example. I love our hospital, 
but I was there today and they're using styrofoam and this and that, or even if they're making a transition to using more, you know, that, that this particular business has made a commitment to go to, you know, compostable things or recyclable whatever, you know. Carol. So I agree completely. Um, one of the things that we know from Disney is that people go to Disney because they want to see Mickey Mouse and they want to see the characters. One of the reasons people follow sports and on the sports page mm -hmm. is because they know the players, right? I can tell you all the race players. I can tell you, okay, who's this? <laughs> right? We all know. Arena, right? <laughs> and we know what color shoes he wears. So one of the things um, that we know, and I've done programs on this, mm -hmm. is that people engage with characters. They want to know who are the people in Tarpon. And one of the things each one of these can do like focusing on a business is also for focusing on a person. So it'd be really cool at first to focus, go through the committee. So Dory, for example, has a really cool job, right? And she works with electric cars and she does that. It'd be, you know, here you come to our meeting and you see Dory Larson and she, she like does this cool electric car thing and this big environmental thing. That's who's on this committee. And so I would suggest that a little spotlight on a person. And then, you know, once we know who committee members are, then we go maybe to our to the staff. And we go to a person in the community who's very active. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that that does is it gets people to know people. Oh, I mean, you know, you know, people stop you on the street. Aren't you this person? Because they've seen you and they've known about you. And that's one way of building engagement and community and getting people to interact. Yep. So I would say do a spotlight on that one over there. Or somebody. Or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you have a really cool job and it fits so well with this. And all of us do. Well, maybe um, introducing the sustainability committee can, you know, we can introduce everybody, but also do a spotlight on each mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. that's uh, part spotlight of the committee. Spotlight on a business, on a sustainability yeah. person, a spotlight on a resident or something Oh, I like think that, that yeah. that's, a, that's mm -hmm. a really positive way of bringing everybody together. Mm -hmm. That's really good feedback. That will uh -huh. definitely... We could also ask, Go like, if you'd like to be highlighted. Like, you've got a Florida-friendly yard that you'd yeah. like to show mm -hmm. off or... Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. a nomination yeah. process would be yeah. ideal for that, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's yeah. a lot of them right in the historical area, even. Mm -hmm. Florida-friendly. And there's tons of butterfly people. Mm -hmm. Right. That, yeah. you know, I mean, that's really interesting, all the different pollinator plants and where you can buy them and how they attract the different... Mm -hmm. species of mm -hmm. flutterers. So maybe there needs to be um, a kind of a submission area on the newsletter too, a link where people yeah, can If someone wants contribute. to submit a, something yeah. cool that they've done, that's a great idea. Or recommend somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's really good feedback, certainly. And visuals. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can I ask... I, I'm sorry if I'm like blinking out on this, but uh, what is the format? Like, how is, is this just digital on? I believe. How are we getting this out to people? That's a good question. I believe it's going to be primarily uh, digital, like a PDF, and, you know, we'll post on the sustainability website and send it out through Connect Tarpon. Um, that's something we're still kind of discussing. Uh, I would have to talk to Robin more in detail about that. She's really leading the charge on this, but. Um, we could have follow-up discussion on that in the like, future. Like, is it going to go emailed out directly to people, too? If it goes through Connect Tarpon, that'll go directly to people's emails. Um, 
you know, we might also uh, entertain doing like Facebook posts and uh, on the different city Facebook pages to, you know, get it out there. That's what we found to be a very efficient way to engage with the community. A lot of people tend to be on Facebook and you can reach a lot of folks in a targeted way very simply that way. So for my newsletter that I put out, we do like a did a friend send you this and you want to start receiving it ah. and then a way to get them linked into the, the mailing list or the, mm -hmm. what you know what I mean? Like connect tarpon list or whatever. That's, that's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Karen Lemon sends out a newsletter. Business happenings. Yeah. yeah. And, and that links lots of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. she could include mm -hmm. that a link to this. Of, of the ones that are on, we have emails for, what percentage do you think that that is of the general public? I mean, in comparison, doing something that was just a single page newsletter in the utility bill on recyclable paper. Uh, I, <laughs> so I really <laughs> couldn't speak to that. <laughs> With uh, soy ink so that we don't get attacked for <laughs> not being sustainable. Um. <laughs> That's that is a, a you know an open question with any sort of sustainability initiative with outreach is you know how much paper do you want to make yeah um, right too much paper we, I don't think we've had that discussion yet that's I, true but the you know I think waste management puts them in there and we had we did send something out but that was the only complaint was that it was not on paper that could be recycled just I, to initially get people on board certainly. sign up on Connect Tarp and and get these this is mm -hmm. newsletter regularly okay I, I can uh, discuss that with Robin and we can uh, evaluate our options as far as you know how to get it out there okay anybody else have any more feedback on that hmm. okay I think we can move on to reviewing the sustainability budget request for 2023 So I think maybe the simplest way to do this, uh, this is a fairly standard template uh, that we use for all of our budget requests um, within the public services department. Uh, we always look at our current 2020, our current year budget. Uh, if there was a previous year, we look at actual expenses. Um, in 2022, there was no sustainability budget, so there were no expenses directly associated with the sustainability account codes. Uh, so those are blank. Um, and we also do 2023 year to date expenditures. So we can have a kind of idea of like where we're trending with expenses and mm -hmm. things like that. And uh, from there, we use that to do a sort of projected end of year uh, fund balance for each of the accounts and the different line items. And uh, then we propose a, a new budget. So, and you can also see, we've got a column for a uh, percent change from last year. So if there's a big increase or decrease in any particular item, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, uh, becomes apparent. Um, this is largely a format we use for, you know, other divisions. Like it makes a lot of sense if you're like running the golf course, which operates like a business or running the, you know, looking at operational costs in like a water utility. Uh, but we thought it would be a useful way to uh, present the information to the committee. Uh, this um, reflects our current budget request to the finance department. Everything is obviously subject to the budgetary review process we submit to finance, they turn around and tell us what we can afford and, um, you know, make minor revisions. And there's certain things that, you know, are uh, sort of out of our control. Like, obviously, we're not going to make any uh, distinct requests on personnel costs or um, insurance or things like that. But the operating costs are uh, largely within our control. And um, we can give you a quick run through on those. One interesting item that we did want to acknowledge we did put in a funding request for uh the intern program for next year um so we budgeted that at 40 weeks of interns uh at 15 dollars an hour uh based on 20 hour weeks so we're anticipating probably two interns a, a fall fall semester intern and a spring semester intern uh unfortunately Fortunately, Alex is graduating, so we'll have to have a new one. But hopefully we get someone uh, at least close to as good as Alex is. And, um, but we definitely envision that as sort of an ongoing program long term uh, to continue to bring in uh, folks in sustainability programs and local colleges to 
get some real world experience and also really help out a lot. So mm -hmm. uh, that's that's a high priority in the budget. Uh, we've also budgeted $150,000 in our request for the climate action plan. That would also include the uh, energy efficiency study, which looks at like energy efficiency and solar availability. Those are two different action items, I believe, within the, sus the sustainability plan action items. So they're going to be rolled into one study for budgetary purposes. And it makes sense to probably have one consultant per perform both of those at the same time, mm -hmm. look at what we can do on energy efficiency and also climate action plan and tie those two together as far as implementability. Uh, going further down, there's some I, there's some costs in there for Robin's travel for various resiliency conferences, mail, cell phones, things like that. Pr uh, there is some professional printing in there for the sustainability plan, the climate action plan. We do want to have a few hard copies for folks that like to have hard copies and for presenting at public workshops and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, promotional activities is a, a big one. Uh, we've got a budget request of $9,000 for promotional activities. Uh, there will be a staff sustainability promotion focusing on improving sustainability within the staff. Uh, we're still, Robin's still thinking about what those, what that might look like. Uh, also there's funding in there for Earth Day next year and additional promotional items and educational materials for the other events throughout the year, you know. Mm -hmm either uh, yeah, Knowledge and Nibbles or um, Touch a Truck and all the other city engagement that she's planning. And um, she's going to get some additional storage for her office. Uh, another interesting one, we did put in a request for five uh, EV charging submeters. Uh, that'll be important long term for the greenhouse gas tracking. Uh, it's very easy to track our emissions from um, the existing city fleet uh, because Hmm. They have fuel cards, and we can see how much fuel they use. Oh. But if they all go charge up and the, the electric stations for the city vehicles aren't metered, we don't. Hmm. Uh, the, all that electricity will be sort of thrown into the buildings and facilities category on our future uh, uh, greenhouse <coughs> gas emissions inventory. So we want to get a little bit of uh, data on that to see, like, as we transition from fossil fuels to EVs, uh, what does that really look like, and are we capturing all of our... Um, greenhouse gas emissions associated with the future fleet, uh, which might have more EVs in it. Um, there's also some funding in there for two level two EV chargers for city facilities. Uh, no firm plans yet on where those are going to be sited. Um, obviously, we're in the middle of developing the new uh, city clerk's building. So uh, after that's completed, we might focus on that or we might relocate them to uh, other city facilities that might have more EVs coming into their fleet over time. Um, Books, publications, and subscriptions, that's largely the sustainability memberships for the city and for uh, Robin as our staff member. And lastly, we have some training items in there for um, Robin to attend the various conferences and stay up to date on the local, statewide, regional, and uh, national efforts on sustainability. Also, I will uh, note that this is not inclusive of all sustainability items in the city. There's lots of other uh, interesting things going on in other departments, uh, but this is the budget that we have control of for the sustainability program. And um, as you know, we start budgeting for future capital items and things like that that might have a sustainability focus, we, uh, we can give you an update on that as well in the future. Yes. I, I just have some clarification. One, so currently, interns don't get paid. Oh, they they get paid currently, yes. Then, but we there it, that's not listed here. This is only the proposed new. Yeah, this is this is proposed for fiscal year twenty four, okay. which will start on October one. So, were they weren't paid fifteen dollars an hour before? The the, the interns are. Uh, Alex is currently being paid right now. Okay, it just um, didn't come out of this. Budget? No, this is uh, this is the budget for for again for next fiscal year. So, but it says twenty three year to date, on um, it, and it's empty. Oh, that's yeah. I'd I'd have to look at that. We might have had a a budget transfer or something like that, um, or that might just be. Uh, I could look into that, but I rest assured, all the interns got paid this year. Um, <laughs> we are looking out for you, Alex. <laughs> they might have they might have uh, been paid out of a different fund, like perhaps like utility administration or something like that. Um, but 
But so they the, certainly got paid, and the money certainly came out of city city funds. <laughs> so the regular salaries and wages, that's just for Robin. Yes. And um, so she, the proposed is she gets almost a $28,000 a year. That's uh, that's a little bit of a misnomer. Uh, her this Again, this is the part of the budget that we control. Uh, and again, all, all city staff are, um, you know, fully, fully budgeted for their full salary for the full year. Uh, but Robin's position is split between uh, utility fund and enterprise fund and general fund. So that only reflects uh, half of her salary. So the other half is in the general fund. Budget. Okay. So it, it's, um, yeah, no, she, she's doing a little bit better than that. <laughs> So when she um, does these other programs, yes. like she does the promotional activities or she works on a, another project, does she get extra administrative costs or that is it just that she's salaried and that's all she gets? Robin's currently hourly, so that, that is one change we are making this year is we're increasing her budget for overtime. Uh, so when she goes and spends extra time out in the community, uh, we have the funding to support those initiatives. Good. She's hourly. Yes. Are you hourly? No. I see. So it's not a salaried, she's not a salaried person. She's an hourly employee? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's that's an interesting uh, distinction. Um, you know, there's, there's different schools of thought on salary versus hourly. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're salary, you don't get overtime. If you... Right do you there's other benefits associated with being salary uh that we could go back and have a discussion or revisit like how that was decided but that's that's how the that's currently her position is currently programmed in the budget and, and how, what's the percentage is. in the city of you know managers of programs that are hourly is she the only one i can't speak to that i, I don't have that information okay. readily available I have a question about like um, if mm. we receive funding to do some of this work, like is that captured? Like, say we get a grant. Uh, th this is there's no grants factored into this current budget request. Um, if we were to get a grant, we that's usually captured through the budget resolution process throughout the year. Uh, the finance department will periodically take updates to the budget to the board to reflect, you know, changes of, you know, oh, we received a grant for this or, um, you know, for example, uh, the vulnerability assessment, uh, we received a grant. We discussed that with uh, Ron Herring, our finance director. They went through the budget resolution process to incorporate that additional funding into that account and, uh, you know, allocate that funding to that project. So uh, if we do get grants, uh, they would be programmed in, but we don't typically include grants that are not yet awarded in, in budget requests. Okay. The reason I'm asking is because like, I'm just looking at the, the EV charging infrastructure and there's tax credits available to do that depending on where they're placed, if they're in a, um, a census tract that's higher than 20% poverty. Okay. So... You know, I'm just trying to, like, see if we're capturing, like, what could come back into the budget instead of just what's coming out. Mm -hmm. No, that, that's an interesting mm -hmm. uh, observation. Um, perhaps mm -hmm. perhaps we could have a, a sidebar after the meeting yeah. of it to discuss those, those funding opportunities. Um, and, like, there's energy efficiency community block grants, and I don't know how much the city is getting or where that's going. You know what I mean? Like, the intent is for sustainable things Certainly. so like is that reflected is it going to be in this budget as like on the positive you know what i mean as like it's like an income instead of a yeah uh, yes so offset, perhaps. thank you <laughs> when we do have grants that have been awarded um you know we will budget those as future income uh you uh, we, if you wanted you know we could have uh, we could get more information from finance exactly about how that happens in the budgetary process. But uh, yes, in the past, you know, we do we typically would fully fund the project. We list the, the total project cost. Uh, if we've got, say, a 50-50 grant or a 50-50 match for a certain type of project, uh, that would be reflected elsewhere in the in the income portion of the budget. Uh, these are focused on uh, projected expenditures. Okay. 
there's just lots more money that's yeah. <laughs> available. Oh, no. so. Okay. You yeah, know. we. I think we would definitely be open to having a conversation about, uh, you know, funding opportunities and uh, see mm. what we can do. And, and again, if we do apply for grants and we hit on some grants uh, or, or are awarded some grants, uh, we can always update the budget throughout the budget year, you know, through mm -hmm. the budget resolution process to incorporate the fact that we were awarded a grant to do to either expand a project or to, um, like the vulnerability assessment, we were awarded a supplemental grant from uh, DEP. Mm -hmm. So we captured that and we expanded the scope of work for the vulnerability mm -hmm. uh, uh, assessment. Mm -hmm. And um, that we didn't get noticed on that until like only a few months ago. So um, it does grants don't always align with the budgetary process, but when we do elect to pursue grants, we, we catch up on them once they're awarded and put that in the budget, depending on when the funding becomes available. Are there people in each department that pursue the grants that are applicable to the department, or is there one person that um, works on that? Just the answer is yes. Um, there are folks in various departments that do apply for grants, and we also have a new position this year in the project administration department right. uh, for a, I apologize, I'm probably going to butcher her title, but she's... Uh, a grant coordinator and project manager, some, some of that fact. She does project management and grants. Mm -hmm. So um, she, is, she works for Bob Robertson, our project administration director, and she is going to be assisting other departments with grants and also continuing to look for grant opportunities for various, various programs. Perfect. And um, mm -hmm. we'll hopefully have additional grant funding coming our way as she is able to go out and find those funding sources. Mm -hmm. Just a little... In this um, chart, in the life and health insurance, it's in red. Why is it in red? That's a good question. Um, that might that might be one of my highlights or something like that. Uh, this is a largely internal document that we mostly use for just making sure we get all our budget entries correct. And uh -huh. sometimes we highlight things because um, you know we don't have control over them. So like or something like that, like some of the stuff that's grayed out. Uh, I, I really don't know why that's highlighted okay. in red, but. Because um, red usually means, you know, alert, or, yeah, you know, it's on fire, or I don't know. Certainly. Um, it's the only one. Uh, that is interesting. I, I'll be honest, I don't know what that means. I don't think there's a lot of significance to that uh, oh, okay. for our, <laughs> our, <laughs> our current fiscal year budget. And again, this, is, this document's heavily focused on what do we need to budget for next year, and that's, highlighted in end of year projected. Okay. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure. It looks like that one might be slightly above the revised budget, so perhaps that was why that was oh. done, you know, that maybe insurance costs went up slightly compared to what was originally budgeted. It's only a couple hundred dollars, though, so it'll get resolved uh, in the end of budget process. So, are there any more comments on the budget for 20? When does this get approved? That's a very good question. Um, the next steps for the budget process will be a public workshop in June, open to all, hmm. all local residents and citizens. And then there'll be a series of budget workshops with the board throughout the summer. Uh, I don't have the schedule right in front of me, but um, those will be publicly noticed and some of them will coincide with uh, existing budget workshops. But the ultimate budget approval usually occurs in the late August, early September time frame in time to give the, you know, the finance department enough time to input all this information in before the beginning of the fiscal year. So late summer is when the final approvals typically occur. Okay. So now um, we're going to re debrief about Earth Day, which was awesome. Who is going to share on that? Oh, uh, I was going to ask if if the committee would like to defer to that, since I was not in attendance, I had a family commitment, and perhaps Robin would like to provide an update on that. Okay. Um, if if the mm, that if would it, be fine, we can put that on next month's agenda. Yeah, and I believe you would have to have a motion to defer that item on the agenda. Uh, do we have a motion to defer? I make that? a motion to defer the Earth Day debriefing till next month in June when Robin is here. Robin Reeves. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we have
at the review of the sustainability plan timeline, which seems like we're on track, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that, definitely trying along. Is that your feature? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I really like that we are on schedule with everything thus far. There were worries at certain points that we weren't going to be on schedule, but as far as it looks right now, it looks like uh, we, we're doing pretty good with the timeline. Uh, yes, the, the current plan for this uh, is this is the last time y'all will see the uh, sustainability plan before it goes to our board. So uh, Robin's been coordinating with the city manager uh, regarding our next steps for board engagement. Um, as you recall, we, we didn't get quite the guidance we were looking for at our last uh, board update. So uh, we're going to be working through the city manager to find an option, an opportunity in June to present the uh, this is the finalized sustainability plan after we incorporate these last rounds of comments and do final quality control and t proofreading and things like that mm -hmm. uh, with the board. And they'll have an opportunity for comment and suggestions and things like that. And uh, so that'll be occurring in June. Uh, would be the the next step, and we're looking at. Uh, finalizing the plan sometime in potentially in July, depending on what the board uh, wishes as far as if they want to see it twice or things like that. The, we always defer to the board on how they would like to adopt the, the plan. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask the question I wasn't going to ask before. Mm -hmm. So is there anything about what's being passed at the state level about issues of equity and things like that? that could affect the plan? Hmm. That is an interesting question. I question, don't, thank you. that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. uh, sp speaking openly, I don't believe that we've evaluated this plan uh, as it relates to any um, it recently passed legislation. Uh, that's something we can certainly take a look at before we uh, finalize it. But that's, that's a good, good thing to consider. how much leeway cities have to make their decisions. Um, well, I do know that St. Pete's hiring an equity manager. Um, that's been a big new position that Mayor Welch is putting in. So maybe it's not an issue. But it probably behooves you to find that out before you go to the Board of Commissioners or at least have, you know, something to say to support the plan in that regard, if it comes up. That's a, that's a very good comment. We will take a look at recent le recently passed legislation and anything that's sort of pending and looks like it has legs and make sure that there's no conflicts or uh, that we don't, we're not including anything in the plan that's preempted or something like that, for example. I don't believe we have anything in there that's preempted from local governments currently. We do try to do our best and we did a review with the planning and zoning they tend to stay up to date on what's allowed within various uh, for cities to adopt with like local ordinances and things like that and we believe we're compliant with the law as it stands but uh, bills change so mm -hmm. we'll take a look at that but very good comment okay. so items for the next meetings agenda so for next meeting agenda, we'll have WSP coming to talk about the vulnerability assessment project, and that's going to be in June. And also in June, we're going to have Arcadis. They're coming to talk about the Whitcomb Bayou uh, okay. for project update. Great. So yeah, that's Good. all and, I got. Uh, we're, we've deferred um, the Earth Day debrief, so that could be added in. And will the Board of Commissioners have commented by then? No? That's still being scheduled, okay. so we're, we're, not, we're still nailing that down. The so second if they have, we would. Tuesday, so it would be either the 13th or the 27th, and our meeting is on the 16th. June 16th? Mm -hmm. oh, my parents' wedding is. So it'll either have been discussed two days before or two weeks after. So if it is discussed, you'll report, correct? Certainly. What happened. So 
Um, I have one question regarding the newsletter publication. Um, Robin's going to be working on it. Will we be able to see it at all, or is it going to be published in June? Or um, the, what? I never, never considered the timeline of that. Uh, the, Robin's goal is to, you know, we're, June's going to be fairly busy for Robin, okay. so her goal was to um, hear feedback from you, uh, take that into consideration, create a document, and go ahead and publish without uh, coming back for, for a newsletter, like mm -hmm. a published newsletter approval. Okay. Sounds good. And I'm sure she'll email it to us. I, I, can, I think you can all rest assured that you'll all get a copy. <laughs> Okay. Are there any staff comments? Uh, yes, I think Robin had a few things she wanted me to pass along. Okay. Yes, uh, number one, uh, please remind, uh, Robin would like to pass along that she would like to remind anyone on the committee who has not done so yet to take the vulnerability assessment survey and please encourage all of your neighbors and colleagues to do the same. And the same for the uh, City Arbor's tree survey. Mm -hmm. um, and Where is Shannon's office? Cause if Shan I, don't have it, I don't have it done. And it's, they want it, she wants it done by the 31st. So I, I was going to drop it by tomorrow. It's downstairs in uh, building development. Okay, thank you. And I think that's all we had for staff comment today. Yes. Could you, could you ask Robin, when we were at... Um, Nipples and knowledge and nipples. Knowledge and nipples. Um, the audience suggest made lots of suggestions about actions, mm -hmm. and if Robin noted them, could we get a list of that, please? I can and pass that along. That would be certainly. a good thing to, to talk about because there were a lot of suggestions during that um, event. Okay. So maybe that would be a good thing to add uh, to the next Right. Yeah. Um, knowledge and nibbles, saying. debrief Brief, as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and whether it's possibly going to continue next year if we have another invitation from another group, maybe. Mm -hmm. That'd be a good item for discussion, certainly. Okay. Are there committee comments? No comment. A uh, short one. I'm really excited. The plan's going to the BOC. We did it. Hey, <laughs> bro. Yeah, yeah. Oh, geez. It seemed like it took forever, and all of a sudden it's here, right? That's what I said last time. I felt like I was giving Snow, birth right? to an <laughs> elephant because they're pregnant for like the three years or something. Is like three years, really long. Right? Okay. Well, good job, everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank all you guys. for all your hard work. And your presence. Yep. And your good questions. Thank you. So we can end early. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, nay. Yay. <laughs> oh, no. Who are these from?